Hey, what's going on guys? Jay here with Jace Two Cents, bringing you a video uh, about these two guys once again. As if this horse hasn't been beaten to absolute death, we're gonna go ahead and we're just gonna beat it a little bit more. Oops. It doesn't matter whether or not you're an old school builder like me or a new school builder looking at building your first computer. We all are just constantly up in arms about whether or not you should go with AMD or Intel. The industry is constantly changing and it doesn't help that you have fanboys on both sides trying to lure you in to their side to strengthen their numbers or whatever the reason may be. I don't understand fanboys, to be honest with you. So today we're gonna talk about how much it really does cost you to go with AMD versus Intel in terms of power consumption and just how long it'll take for you to make your money back if you choose to go with the more power efficient Intel. So that's why for today's video, we're gonna go ahead and talk about the energy consumption and we're gonna turn it into energy dollars on your energy bill and find out just how much you really do or don't save when it comes to going with Intel over AMD. Now I'm gonna try and make today's video as easy to understand as possible. We are gonna be talking about numbers and equations and values, so it might go a little quickly for some people, but I'm seriously gonna do my best to make it as understandable as possible. Now we've got two arguments kind of going on here. One, uh, AMD is more power inefficient than Intel, and that is absolutely true. AMD does use more watts than Intel. And when you overclock both CPUs, the difference becomes even greater. AMD takes more energy to overclock, so that's why for the sake of today's test, we are gonna talk about stock clocks versus overclocks, and we're gonna compare those in two separate scenarios to try and determine how much money you're really gonna spend extra on your energy bill by going with AMD. Now the system wattages, we're talking about full system wattage from the wall. Now these are just the CPU loads. We're not talking about GPU. That's a whole nother ball game. It's a whole nother layer to this whole equation about which is more efficient. And once again, you have different options there as well. So for the sake of today's video, we are talking about CPU load only. Now because wattage is one of those things that is just it's the hardest variable to control because everyone's systems are different. Everyone has a different number of fans, different power supply, different uh, motherboards, different drives installed. It could vary all over the place. So what I did was I went to the most common tech forums like BitTech, HardOCP, uh, Overclock.net, um, Tom's Hardware, and I took their benchmarks and their charts and I just averaged them out to give me an average system wattage to use for the sake of my test. Now for the 4770K wattage from the wall at stock speeds, it was 176 watts from the wall at stock speeds. And when you overclock it, it's about 251 watts from the wall. So that is our 4770K system for today's educational piece. Now the AMD side, the 8350 at stock, was pulling 213 watts from the wall and overclocked was pulling 328 watts from the wall. Remember, these are averages, so that's what we're gonna be using for today. Now for the kilowatt rating, because remember guys, we are talking about your power bill. And again, that's another variable that I have no control over. Some people pay as little as seven cents per kilowatt hour. Some people pay as high as 28 cents, maybe even more per kilowatt hour, depending on your region. Here in Southern California, our averages are actually much higher uh, than what I'm using for this test, but the national average is about 14 cents per kilowatt hour. So that's what we're gonna go with here. Now remember guys, these wattages are full load wattages. We don't care about idle because quite honestly, idle is so low, it would take years and years and years and years and years for it to even come into play when it comes to cost difference of these CPUs. So we are gonna be using a 14 cents per kilowatt hour at four hours per day load, 100% load, at 365 days per year. Gives us a nice baseline, kind of a high baseline, but it gives us kind of a worst case scenario of what energy costs could be for this. So that's four hours per day, 365 days a year, at 14 cents per kilowatt hour. Now in Intel at 176 watts at stock speed, we have an average energy usage of $35.97 per year. I'll put that up here somewhere if I don't fail in post edit because you know, I, I kind of leave notes to myself here. Like, remember Jay, when you're done with the video, you have to go buy milk, um, kitty litter, and uh, some unmentionables. 
Now for the AMD, for the same system at stock speeds, we are looking at $43.54 per year. So that gives us a cost difference between AMD and Intel of $7.57 per year. Now when you overclock it, we already know that the gap gets bigger between the energy usage of the two CPUs. So overclocked to 4.8 gigahertz on both of those systems, we had an Intel usage $51.30 per year and AMD was $67.04 per year for a cost difference of $15.74 per year energy bill effect AMD versus Intel. So right about now, you should be able to start seeing that, that Intel fanboyism argument of, ah, don't go with AMD, don't do it. It uses so much more energy. It is gonna cost you a billion dollars more at the end of the year. You don't want to do that. It'll give you a tumor. Big, huge tumor. We're flying to choppers. Ow, 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 ow. I sincerely apologize for that. Now that was just stock speeds. If you overclock it and you make the gap a little bit bigger, the numbers get a little bit better, but you're still talking 8.9 years to make your money back that you spent on going with Intel over AMD if you use the argument of power consumption. It's not a valid argument, people. I don't care who you are. I do not care if the Pope himself or Barack Obama says, go with Intel because it saves energy. You're gonna spend more money out of pocket and you're gonna upgrade long before you ever saw any of those returns on your energy costs. Now remember, that's four hours per day, 100% full load. I don't think anyone does that. Not even me as a YouTube producer. And I'm, on, I'm constantly rendering something on my machines. It doesn't even come close to that. And if you have a lower, like that 10 cents per kilowatt hour average, it's gonna take even longer, more than 20 years to get your money back by spending $140 more on Intel if the sole purpose was to save energy on your energy bill. It just doesn't make sense, people. Now, if you're one of those few fortunate people like myself who happen to live near a micro center, the numbers are a little bit better, but still staggering. For instance, if you paid $269 for your 4770K for micro center, versus the $179 you could have gotten the 8350 for, it's gonna take 11.9 years to make your money back by going Intel, or if you overclock it, 5.72 years uh, over the AMD if you're overclocked. Now the 5.72 years, some of you watching this video may have actually owned your computer that long. Many of us have not. I tend to do an upgrade annually. So I would never use the energy consumption argument when it comes to why you would choose Intel over AMD. Now that's not to say that Intel doesn't have its benefits over AMD and vice versa. There are a ton of arguments on both sides of the fence, many of them very, very valid. But with the amount of people that ask me on a daily basis, I mean, we're talking probably a dozen messages a day from people asking me, you know, I heard on the forums that they say that if I go with AMD, I'm gonna spend about $50 more per year uh, running that AMD versus if I went with the equivalent Intel. Guys, that's what it sounds like to me when people People are saying that because you're repeating what you hear on forums and, and different videos by people who just may not be nearly as coherent when it comes to the actual energy argument when it comes to these CPUs. Now listen here, if you want to buy something for energy consumption and save money, then you're going to be looking at something like an APU because you're not going to even have a graphics card in there, which is going to save you a ton of energy, less tumors, and you're going to cure cancer at the same time. Think about it, it's huge. Okay guys, I, I hope this has helped you at least take one invalid argument and just ignore it when you hear it. And if you see someone using the argument of, well, AMD uses so much more energy than Intel, you're gonna pay for it on your energy bill, link them to this video and hopefully it will open their eyes. If they're not, then, then just take it for the fanboy that they are. So guys, it's been Jay's Two Cents, really hoping to piss off those people who truly think that the energy bill is a valid argument to be an Intel fanboy. So, there it is. See you in my next video.